The NFL season picks up speed towards the Super Bowl next month in Houston, Texas. Basketball, from high school to the NBA, puts on a full-court press to get the fans to focus on slam dunks instead of Hail Marys. Locally, at the Sty Dome, young basketball players are taught that there's more to the game than what happens on the court. Joining me this week is a man who runs the Sty Dome, Eric Hicks of Game Over NYC. Welcome back, Eric. Man, I'm glad to be here. Yeah, happy glad New Year to, to you also. Same to you, man. Same right? to you. You know, first, we got to get, before we, you know, get into our conversation on the Sty Dome. Uh-huh. The Knicks, the Nets. Like the soap opera continues, right? What? Oh, as far as with Mello. You don't like me Jackson. or something? We got to talk about that. Hey. All right, what's first? Let's go with the Knicks for a few minutes, for, 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 for a few seconds. Yeah, Knicks. All right, so the Knicks have their usual drama. Soap opera, right? Yeah, usual soap opera, usual drama right now. Carmelo Anthony and Phil Jackson going back and forth. Carmelo Anthony uh, called for a meeting with Phil Jackson that took place yesterday and said he wants to stay. So for some of us, that's good. For some of us, that's bad. But Carmelo, has all the cards. He has a no-trade contract, which means he has to approve any trade. He gets to decide which team he would go to. Mm -hmm. And if he doesn't want to go, he stays here. And the coach, Honasek, he's really in trouble, right? There, we got right? some problems there, too, because uh, I don't know if you heard Derrick Rose didn't show up to a basketball game. Allen Iverson used to talk about practice. Derrick Rose doesn't show up to a game? I mean, he that's ridiculous. He's family problems, right? Well, we don't know what it is. He could have made a phone call. Mm -hmm. And that, I think that's symptomatic. You know, it's almost like the tip of the iceberg. What's really going on when you don't show up to a game and you can't call someone? But here's the thing. Here's the problem. No matter what, the fans continue to show up. So I'm losing, but I'm winning. Okay, so I talked to a couple of fans the other day. Uh, give me a call. Oh, I'm going to the garden. Not I'm going to the Nick game. I'm going to the garden. So. It's, it's the place kind of, to be. The so, garden is the place to be. Right. As long as you can put Spike Lee and right, 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 yeah, right, right, right. Seinfeld right, 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 and on the, you know, on the side of the court, yeah. it's the place to be. And the, and the basketball players, it's just like a uh, Thanksgiving dinner, right? The turkey's there. And, well, and the other surrounded. thing, too, is depending who's coming to town, you may go there to see the other team. But, you know, the Knicks are still interesting. They're not as bad as that other team that we've got to talk okay. about. Jeremy Lin. Lin Sanity. Jeremy Lin has Brooklyn played 12 Nets. games. We haven't seen Jeremy Lin. He's played 12 games out of 40 the whole year, so uh, that experiment is not working. Will he be on the team next year? I don't know. So is it the culture on both teams? Is there, is there a culture— That's a tough a, question. A, 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 a culture where we've tell adjusted gonna ask. to losing? You know, the, both teams are losing, yeah. all right? The Nets are 8-33. And, and it's been this year away for years. It did, okay, so, the Nets I mean, are 8-33. I mean, so how do you change the culture? I, I think that there's two different situations. The Knicks are a lot closer to turning it around than the Nets. The Nets don't even have their own draft pick until 2019. Okay. They don't have many attractive pieces to trade, though you do have a Brooke Lopez and um, maybe Hollis Jefferson. Mm -hmm. You can uh, trade those into something. But it's a long haul for the Nets. You know, once again, people say, I'm going to the Barclays Center. They don't say I'm going to a net game. And then when they tell me that, I'm like, what, you got nothing else to do? Because, I mean, it's just that bad, and I don't really see any light at the end of the tunnel. But what happens in, in, in the NBA, franchises turn around sometimes based on luck. You make a trade, you get lucky in the draft, and the next thing you know, boom. Right. Oh, it's all about entertainment, man. Absolutely. If the people are being entertained, can't beat it. As long as you can I, fill those seats. Right, that's true. All right, basketball, as far as culture basketball was going at the Sty Dome. What's happening at the Sty Dome these days? I know you had Amp one there. You had, uh, you had Drill Masters, and you also had uh, Scurry. Kerry yeah. Scary, who Scary. played with the uh, played with the Utah Jazz, the went Utah. to Alexander Hamilton when it was Alexander Hamilton. Now mm -hmm. it is Grand Street Campus, right? Right, right. and also played for LIU in, in college, and also played with me. He was my teammate in the uh, Mount Vernon Pro League. Kerry Scurry was an incredible, incredible player. Mm -hmm. um, as you said, he went and got drafted by the Utah Jazz. But there is a kid that was 6'8 and could do everything. It's so funny. He sent me a little clip of one of his dunks in the NBA. Mm -hmm. And I used to describe this dunk. I had been describing it to people for years that he used to do in street ball games. You know, I see Kerry on the wing, hit him with right. the pass, and next thing you know, he was hook dunking it. Well, he actually did it in the NBA game and sent me a clip. Kerry was an incredible guy ran into some problems uh, through his NBA career. He's back on the scene now. We have him at the Sty Dome. He's helping kids. He's talking to kids, doing his thing and telling his story and writing a book. He also has, um, during his play, before big men were moving this quick, he had amazing footwork. 
Kerry moved like a gazelle. Kerry is one of those guys, if you laid the ball up and he was defending, he could stick it on the glass, grab it, and go the full length of the court and get you a dunk on the other end. He was uh, an athlete way ahead of his time and a very nice guy, a very humble guy. When I had heard some of the things that had, you know, gotten into his life and things, I was really, really surprised. But hopefully that's all behind him, and we're going to help him now. Amp one, basketball. I met Amp one through you guys, man. Uh, Amp one is a a team of amputee basketball elite athletes. And once again, they're at the Sky Dome doing their thing and, you know, they're working out with the kids and talking to the kids. It, I always believe with basketball, since we have this tool and we have the attention of these kids, if I don't use this platform to do more than just teach kids about basketball, we're failing as a company. So they need to know about uh, the different things that go on and things that they can use as a thought process to be successful at anything that they do. Drill Masters, Lanier De Niro, he played on, he, he appeared on uh, Ellen DeGeneres about a couple of months ago. Drill Masters, once again, has found a home at the Brooklyn Star Dome. Met him right here at this table a couple of months ago. We talked afterwards for about two hours. We brought his program into the Brooklyn Star Dome. And I have to say, um, from a business standpoint, the, the reason why I try to help an amp or a scurry or a uh, Drill Masters is because I've always vowed to do the things for people in business that people wouldn't do for me. And, um, to just kind of break a cycle of— Because sometimes people tell you, no, no, we can't do this, we can't do this, but this sometimes reason we can't— I've been to places where you can't even get a no, you know, you don't even get a return phone call and things like that. So if I have an opportunity to help somebody with their program and it fits what they do and they stick to our philosophy, I do not believe in selling hoop dreams. Is there too much emphasis—I mean, you, you keep going back to this—is there too much emphasis in our community, especially our community, the black community, on basketball? And not and also, when we look at the game, we look at the game on the court. But there's also a game off the court where you could become maybe a referee, a coach, a scorekeeper, this is a where manager. I, this is where I get in trouble. Okay. Basketball should be used, and sports in general should be used as a teaching tool to teach the principles of success. Basketball only lasts maybe, if you're lucky, 30, 35 years in your life. And then you're not even at the halfway mark uh, nowadays. So now what do you do? You know, I have people that talk to me about basketball. They can only talk about what they did 30 years ago. I was like, okay, but what's happened in the last 20 years of your life, or the last 10, 15 years of your life? If you, if basketball is the total emphasis, you're going to peak out at 22, 23 years old, and then what? So is life all downhill after that? Um, I talk about guys like Jamal Mashburn had an NBA career, but now owns, like, 50 Outback Steakhouses and other franchises. Albert King, too. Albert King with the McDonald's and, I believe, Burger Kings. And then even a guy I met years ago, Reggie Theus, used to talk, talk to me about a place called Starbucks and how he was invested in Starbucks and Pizza Huts and things like that. If you can take this platform and use that same competitive spirit to be successful in, in business. At the Sky Dome, are you emphasizing, you know, as far as scorekeeping? Or, or becoming a referee or becoming a coach instead of just, you know, maybe, you know, teaching you to shoot a better jump shot or shoot with your, shoot with I, your left or shoot with your right. I, you know, it, it's funny, and, and we're starting to get emails from parents of how pleased they are with the program that we run there, because, once again, we have to use this as a platform to teach other things. Yes, we teach uh, how to work a scoreboard, how to keep score. We teach— Because these are jobs. These are careers. These are thriving careers that you got. money being made. Mm -hmm. but, you know, I, I tell people all the time, probably the greatest thing that happened to me in sports was earning a Division One scholarship. But second place to that is walking in the Foot Locker and seeing my apparel hang, you know, hanging a Foot Locker store, turning on the TV and seeing a celebrity wearing something that I designed for a, a celebrity that I didn't even know. It was his choice to do. Mr. Hicks, we are out of time. We're Game out of time, over. Man. Game over. Game over, baby. Glad to see you. Good to see you, too.